Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Like I've been saying, friends, the year 2022, Christmas, has come early. Who even needs gifts from Santa Claus when you're getting gifts from the universe? 2022 is really the year that keeps on giving. Of course, there's a lot of negative happening. When it comes to the economy, government policy, world peace, I mean, not exactly small things, but anyways, we gotta count our blessings. 2022 has been a bad year in a certain way, but it's also been an incredible year politically and culturally culture is shifting and the one thing that we keep pointing to over and over again is the collapse of the woke media i released a video on this yesterday following the colossal collapse of don lemon mr lemonhead at cnn and honestly i thought that that was probably going to be the final gift for a little while at least a couple weeks most likely a couple months but 2022 culturally is the year that keeps on giving as another woke host this time at msn NBC, which is much more surprising. Considering I wasn't aware that MSNBC was trying to change directions, I thought being wacko leftists was just what they did. I didn't realize they were having an identity crisis. But anyways, I'm getting a little bit distracted here. A major leftist woke host, Tiffany Cross, let's just call her wannabe Joy Reid, has just been canned, fired, canceled, whatever you want to call it. She is done, gone, see you later. The year 2022 continues to get better as networks are cleaning house. Let me show you guys exactly what's going on here. Let's talk about it. Let me show you what I got to show you. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks, take a look at this from Variety. MSNBC cuts ties unexpectedly with weekend host Tiffany Cross. And if you guys need a little bit of a reminder or a flashback who Tiffany Cross is, well, here you go. It is a war. It is indeed a war. And I have to say, they have won some battles, Jasmine, but we, we have to keep our eye uh, on the war and, and everybody needs to pick up a weapon and, and get involved because this is a... Uh, <laughs> for the, the, the safety and, and lasting uh, of the country. Us have seen the dangers when powerful white people decide they want something, they annex it. And they've never had a problem replacing the people who stand in their way. White people deputizing themselves in some position of authority to have jurisdiction over their life when they need to mind their blanking business. White replacement can strangle culture. So yes, we should all be concerned about white replacement. It is, after all, a very threat to our survival here. Thing is, you know, it seems like there's this effort to normalize um, this kind of behavior and to make Trumpers feel, you know, at home and prioritize um, their feelings. But when it results in violence, I don't know that there's space for that. Uh, and, and, you know, it's separating the GOP from the extremists, it seems these two have converged. Say, Florida l literally looks like the of the country so let's get rid of florida you know i'd feel bad for tiffany cross if she wasn't you know frankly i'm just gonna say it such a terrible person she like joy reed they market themselves as being social justice activists as really caring they really care about the race issue and they focus on seemingly nothing but race issues except all they do is so racial division into society white people this white people that white supremacy this white supremacy that you aren't the good guy if you have an unhealthy relationship or obsession with identity politics. If every single point that you make in the political world always comes down to it's white people's problem, or white people are evil and they're doing this to you, white supremacy, then all you're doing is fomenting anger and hate and injecting it straight into society with the huge amplification of having an MSNBC show. It's toxic, and frankly, if you're pushing that type of identity politics, you're just a bad person. You're a hustler. The idea that we should be constantly looking backwards in history, taking notes and quantifying all of the bad things that happened to different groups of people, and holding it against current people in present day, is ridiculous, and only somebody who's manipulative would do something like that. Anybody who has good intentions to move forward, tries to see the good in society and humanity in different groups of people, doesn't want to treat people differently and attack people based on the color of their skin. These woke leftoids have adopted this notion or this idea that it's okay to do it as long as you're targeting white people. It's incredibly toxic it's counterproductive, it's regressive. And honestly, between Joy Reid, Tiffany Cross, and what's that other guy's name? Let me Google it really quick. Ellie Mistal. Between those three characters, it's honestly seemed like the direction that MSNBC was going in. A woke, far-left, anti-white.
white network. And speaking of Ellie Miss Stahl and his connection to Tiffany Cross, it seemed as though every single time Tiffany Cross was in the news, or any clip that was being linked with Tiffany Cross, Ellie Miss Stahl was there right next to her and we know exactly who he is. Again, the same sort of toxic racial venom being pushed every single weekend. This is literally what conservative white folks do when they don't get their way. They turn violent. A majority of white people do not support policies that would unpack and unroll and reform this system of justice. This is what they want. Matt Gates is giving the white folks what they want. Amy, I don't have a crystal ball, all right? What I know is the law and what I know is what white people are willing to do to defend white supremacy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who the, it's not all Republicans, just MAGA Republicans are for. Like, I'm sure that there are some white supremacists who will vote with white supremacists who don't think they're white supremacists. We're happy that Biden didn't call them a white supremacist, but like, it's not for me. Walker's right. gonna do what he's told. And that's what Republicans like. That's what Republicans want from their Negroes. This country hates us. This country hates black people, and we know it. We talk about it. We joke about it. We know We know what we're up against. Well, it's all crumbling down. It's all coming to an end, as woke media seems to be pivoting. Let's take a look at what they wrote in the article here. Tiffany Cross, the MSNBC weekend host who was known for running the freewheeling Saturday commentary program, Cross Connection, is leaving the NBC Universal owned cable news outlet. Her production staff was informed of the decision on Friday morning, according to three people familiar with the matter. MSNBC declined to make executives available for comment, and Cross could not be reached for immediate comment. MSNBC decided to not renew Cross's contract after two years, according to one of these people, and severed ties with her immediately. A rotating group of anchors will lead her weekend hours until a replacement is found, and the production staff assigned to her show are likely to stay in place. There has been some speculation that Cross's relationship with MSNBC was becoming frayed, according to two of these people, with executives at the network growing concerned about the anchor's willingness to address statements made by cable news hosts on other networks and indulging in commentary executives felt did not meet the standards of MSNBC and NBC. And yet the network is parting ways with an anchor who was proven popular with audiences as it sought to attract black viewers overall and black female viewers in particular. Cross was an essential building block in MSNBC's efforts to add a broader range of diverse voices to its schedule. After competing in an on-air bake-off of sorts in 2020 with Jonathan Capehart and Zerlina Maxwell to fill the weekend hours, led by Joy Reid. Cross has presided over a loose but chatty program that she also promoted heavily on social media. Cross, a former Washington bureau chief of BT, had worked as a political analyst for MSNBC and was a former resident fellow at the Harvard Kennedy School's Institute of Politics. So obviously we don't have too much detail here, but it must have been pretty bad. What exactly did Tiffany Cross do behind the scenes that made executives so angry with her? The curiosity that surrounds the situation is what did she say? What did she do to justify this firing, it must have been real bad. Because if you compare her to, let's say, Joy Reid, her counterpart, for instance, Joy Reid basically pushes the same venom every single night, non-stop. Some would say possibly even worse than Tiffany Cross. And Joy Reid also has a history of scandal, a history of bigotry online. We all remember when her old tweets came to surface, and she claimed that during that particular time in her life, those specific tweets during that specific week in that month, her account was hacked. It wasn't her. And the reason we know that that's a legitimate excuse is because she didn't delete those tweets after her account was hacked. You know, public figure tweeting bigoted things, their account gets hacked. They certainly wouldn't go back and delete those tweets from the individual who hacked their account. No, of course not. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that if Joy Reid is not getting fired for saying crazier things and having a history of bigotry and scandal, what exactly did Tiffany Cross do? I mean, we do know that she called for direct violence. She called for a call to arms to bring weapons in the fight against Republican extremism or the boogeyman of Republican extremism that lives in these people's minds. But at the end of the day, I think I know what's going on here. It's just a general move away from radical left-wing ideology that is losing the Democrats so much. I think we're just seeing a general move away from these wacko leftists pretending to be journalists on TV, saying absolutely crazy stuff that goes viral constantly, making them look so terrible every single night. I mean, here's an example from Joy Reid last night. The people I ever heard here use the word inflation 
are journalists um, and economists, right? So that is not part of the normal lexicon of the way people talk. So it's interesting that Republicans are doing something they don't normally do, right? Which is not use the, com the common tongue, right? Not use just common English to sort of use do on their campaigns like they're doing with crime. But what they've done is they've taught people the word inflation, right? Yeah. Most people who would have never used that word ever in their lives are using it now because they've been taught it, including on TV, including in newspapers. They've been taught this word and they, they sort of wrap this word around whatever it is that they really want to vote, the, the, you know, the reasons they really want to vote. Yes, Joy, you got it. Inflation was never part of the normal lexicon, as if people who were paying attention over the last however many years weren't constantly pointing to inflation as being a key problem of all the overspending and overprinting of dollars. The toxic rhetoric, the stupid rhetoric, the viral gaffes over and over again, pushing all of this nonsense. I think networks want to finally move away from it because, I mean, look, they saw the results. Democrats are the least popular they've ever been. People find they're extreme. People find they're incompetent. They don't trust them on the issues. And these talking heads who largely represent Democrat ideals, rhetoric, talking points, philosophy, policy, these talking heads are going to be the first ones to go because they represent the Democrat Party. It's not MSNBC, it's MSDNC. And the only thing that's going to wake up the left to reform itself and to have to move towards a different direction away from this craziness is losing elections. We're seeing voter registration trends moving towards the Republican column nonstop. Democrats are on their way to lose spectacularly, and all of a sudden, there's a massive cultural pivot away from the far-left woke crazy. It's almost like the cultural white blood cells ridding the body politic of this woke virus. That's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it though. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. I got a bunch of things I got to get to, so I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching friends, and I'll see you on the next one.